Saint Lucia is an eastern Caribbean island nation home to beautiful volcanic beaches, fishing villages, reef diving sites and luxury resorts. Its capital, Castries, is a popular cruise port known for its colourful murals and palm-lined Vaiji beach. Located near the town of Soufri are the Pitons, two mountainous volcanic plugs listed as a World Heritage Site. Gros Piton is 2,619 feet above sea level and is one of the main attractions of St. Lucia's western coast. The hiking trails in its interior rainforest lead to stunning waterfalls and from its peak you can see spectacular views of Sofria, St. Vincent and the Maria Islands. The hike up Gros Piton is described on a tour website as not too difficult for most travellers and can take about three to six hours in one direction. You're advised to start in the cool morning hours to ensure that you make it back down by nightfall. But we heard a rumour that an ex-firefighter had run up and down in under an hour and a half. Our aim was four hours in total, which was supposedly respectable. You excited? Yeah! Okay, is this the start? Or is this yeah. the start of the morning. The morning of the hike, we met our guide, signed a disclaimer saying we wouldn't sue them if we died en route, and then began our ascent, slightly later than expected due to a travel delay. I was pretty nervous knowing the scale of what we were about to do. You can see the peak from all over the island, and it looks high. The sun came up quickly, very quickly. About 30 minutes in, I was already absolutely sweltering. I'm already sweaty, and we are just beginning. <laughs> Shan, a seasoned outdoors woman, seemed to dance up the mountain, taking the time to point out various interesting plants whilst looking incredibly elegant throughout. Bromeliad. <laughs> Aw, what is it? I think it's like a symbiotic plant that hangs on the side of other plants. I, on the other hand, looked like a complete mess like I've been dipped in hot Vaseline. I could only focus on dragging myself up, just putting one foot in front of the other. I'm realizing I've never actually really done this kind of hiking and it is not for the faint heart. It's sort of um, nice amounts of concentration with, you know, steady pace. You just don't want to put a footstep wrong. And I'm trying to keep my heart rate relatively low, but it's going pretty high, which is crazy. It's going as if I was like running. And we're only just over a quarter of the way. So. And I'm so sweaty already. So I guess the channel name is fitting. Proof of sweat. Literally. Ooh. I thought I was in okay shape before embarking on this hike. A four hour walk, no problem. But a four hour hike up and down a mountain, it's quite a different experience. It was extremely intense and more fool me, I didn't bring any energy boosting snacks. We only had water, lesson learned, fuel up. I hate complaining. I always want to be the positive one. I always want to try new things and be an optimist. I know that I am incredibly lucky to have experienced this at all, but I found it incredibly tough. And I'm not sure I'd recommend it unless you're extremely fit. I just had a guy be like, you must be a really good hiker if you've got one camera in one hand and uh, a walking stick in the other. And I was like, no, just an idiot. <laughs> Oh my god, this is, this is hilarious. I literally thought we were going on a gentle hike. Two hours scrambling up and down each way in the heat really took it out of me. I can cycle up hills for hours and be happy as Larry, but this was a whole different set of muscles. I found it very hard on my knees in particular, just agonizing. By the time we approached the summit, I was absolutely dead on my feet, at my max heart rate on my Apple Watch, and I just had no choice but to push through. Little hike, they said. Go on a little walkie walk. I am Alex Honnold, free soloing, no ropes. Don't slip now, Mary. Sorry? Is it the end? Thank God. Oh, oh wow, okay. At the top, 
brief elation, beautiful views, but knowing in my heart of hearts that I still had to come back down. And that was just as bad, if not worse. Oh my God, that's rolled ankle, rolled ankle. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, loving this. Okay, just to tell the truth, not enjoying myself as much anymore. This is just never ending. I miss a bicycle, I miss flat roads. I'm not good at scrambling. We've been going downhill for like an hour and a half. I thought it would be quicker. In fact, it hurts, it really hurts more. Oh my God, okay. Shah is being an absolute champion. And she's just taking it in her stride, literally. Oh, this sucks. I don't like it anymore. It's really beautiful though. But I am depleted. No food. We were such idiots. Bring little snacks with you. People have beers at the top. Oh my god. When we finally finished and reached our goal of four hours, we were rewarded with a catamaran around the beautiful island. I think that's the way I'd prefer to see mountains in the future. So what did I take away from this? I'm all for pushing yourself, experiencing new things and taking risks. On this occasion, I'm going to admit defeat. I found it far too difficult to even enjoy any second, but I'll use that feeling for good training in future to remind myself how lucky I am to get to be able to enjoy the exercises I do. Thanks for watching this episode of Proof of Sweat. Tell me your stories of challenges you found tough in the comments below, but as always, I'll be seeing you here very soon.